Good morning, Valley Church. God is good, isn't he? Well, has this been amazing this morning? Did you have your encounter this morning? We got four encounters this morning. Awesome. Ah. Revelation, what is it, 12, 20, or 2010, 2011? Anyway, in Revelation, it says, And they overcame the adversary by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and didn't love their lives even unto death. They overcame the adversary by the blood of the Lamb and the word, the blood of the Lamb. That Lamb is Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for us. Ah. Man, it's been an awesome morning. I have been blessed to tears several times. Dave came up, gave me a, a big hug, and called me a crybaby. <laughs> Thank you for that confirmation, my friend. <laughs> ah, I was, this morning we have some testimonies. We've got a couple amazing amazing testimonies that need to be shared. They overcame the adversary by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimonies. So it's testimonial time at Valley Church. First, I'd like Susie to come up here. We've got an amazing testimony just about to have and bring, and bring. Do I have to come down and grab one of his arms too? You're coming up here, cowboy. Everybody knows there is no junior Holy Spirit, right? No junior Holy Spirit. This young man, God has been giving him dreams and visions. And one of the things that, are, that, that the children are being taught here is you know, prophetic art, where, where they start to create, draw, paint what God shows them. And it's just... It's, it, this story is absolutely incredible that goes along with this with this amazing painting that he did and he explained this painting right after he did it what God showed him I got a microphone right here for you all right Susie hmm you're next. We, we just want to share this now. Okay. Good morning. So in March, I wrote the date, March 11th, um, we had our last um, worship night here before everything started hitting and we kind of closed down. So Destiny had prayed over the kids to um, see what God is saying, draw what she, um, God is saying to you. And he didn't know that my sister... He knew my sister had cancer, but he didn't know she was going to start doing chemo. And um, he started drawing this picture. I don't know. Can you zoom in on the vid? I don't know if it could go on there so people can see it. And um, he drew this picture, and we were like, me and Destiny were like, well, what did you draw? And he said, this is Auntie on the table at the hospital. Maybe I can hold it up so all will uh, yeah. around. It's up okay. there now? Oh, great. He's oh, like, <laughs> up there like... Okay. So hold it still. Okay. So, want to hold it, baby? This is Auntie on the table, and um, she was at the doctor's. And I said, well, what is... Who's this? What is this? And he said, this is the doctor coming in the hospital, and he's yelling, yay, you're cancer-free. And she's saying, yay. And then um, I'm just listening to him. And then he's telling me there's angels around her. And I, he said this was gold coming down from heaven, covering <laughs> her. And then this red right here was the blood that was coming up that Jesus was cleansing from her. And then I said, well, why, what's this that you wrote? He said, follow the good, don't follow bad. And at the time, I didn't understand what that meant. I just thought, oh, okay, language of children, you know. But later, in July, July 1st, my sister ended up going to her doctor's after her chemo and everything. The doctor came in, and she told me it was like a deja vu kind of thing, I guess, where she was sitting down, and she realized the picture, because we had shared this picture with her in March. 
and this was July when the doctor was giving back her report. And she said that um, they were just going, yay, yay, you're cancer free. And she thought of the picture right away. And then she started to talk that God was always with her. And my sister, she's, she's a believer, but she wasn't always, you know, seeing God in everything she was doing. She was like, she loved God and she just lived life and she was like, I'm saved. But through this, even she said it herself, through this, she saw Jesus and everything and knowing that he was with her. And I told her, I think when it says follow the good, not the bad, I would told her, I think that meant don't believe the, the bad reports, believe the good reports, what God's saying to you. And so I believe that this glory that was falling over her was the glory of God pouring over her and she was seeing him in everything and she said every time she would hear bad a bad report she would be like lord no you like you're with me and there was a moment she was like how am i gonna do this i don't know how i'm gonna do this and she said that on air one um the song i raise a hallelujah came on and that part that says heaven comes to fight for me and she said something just kind of came alive in her and she's like yeah heaven comes to fight for me and so that kind of pushed her. And um, I just wanted to read a scripture real fast. I got this morning, and I'm like, okay, I will share it because I know it's from God. <laughs> One thing about the husband that wasn't in the room. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad I told you. So I asked Nathan, well, where's Uncle Chris? Because she's married, and she doesn't have you know, kids. She's just married, just them. I said, well, where's Uncle Chris in the, the room? You have to put Uncle Chris there. And he goes, I didn't see Uncle Chris there. And I said, okay. So this was March, and then July comes, and my sister said, and guess what? And she goes, and I said, what? And she goes, Chris wasn't in there because of COVID. They're not allowing anyone but the patient. And that's why he didn't see Chris in there. And <laughs> so the veil is taken away from the Lord, for the Lord is the spirit, and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had the veil removed can see the reflection of the glory of the Lord and the Lord and the Lord who is in the spirit makes us more and more like him as we change into his glory image. And I really felt like the glory of God revealed, you know, took off her veil and she was able to see and know what he was saying. And um, so he drew this in March 11th. She started her first chemo seven days later. <laughs> and then he wrote I am the Lord who heals you Exodus 15 26 and at the time when he did this I was just kind of like oh that's cute you know like but really this is a prophetic art and later down the months we realized wow God is good <laughs> Wow. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is? Freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is? Freedom. Yes, 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 yes. As, you know what the title of my message is this morning? Freedom. Recipe for Freedom. It's like, it is so awesome how the Holy Spirit just weaves things together. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so cool. Isn't that amazing, this young? How old is he? Susie, how old is he? Nine years old. No junior Holy Spirit. As we think of, of, of things to celebrate also, I, I'm just looking down here and see the smiling, smiling face of Lolly, and her husband was next to her just a few minutes ago. These guys, this within the last couple days, have been married 43 years. Why don't you stand up and do one of these for us, Lolly? <laughs> 43 years congratulations we have another uh, another testimony remember last week how many of you were here last week oh almost everybody last week I ended up sharing about having that 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 crazy encounter with what I referred to as the little saint lady the little saint lady that that, that I got to uh, had an opportunity to bless well after that after that blessing, you know, I told you that the, that the lady had known, shared with me, yeah, I knew, uh, what's your name? Lynn Hardy. Lynn Hardy, Hardy, Hardy. Yeah, I knew a Hardy, a Benny Hardy, a Benny and her sister Betty. 
these two redheads sitting up here in the front row, that's Benny and Betty this morning. <clears throat> and one of the other things that she recalled is, yeah, Benny's, Benny's boy. Yeah, I'm, I'm Benny's boy right here. Here's my identity. Benny, the, Benny's boy. He preaches at, at, at that church, that church over there. She's the domes. It's like, no, no, but close, <laughs> close. But uh, So that, I thought that was so cool, and I thought that was so funny that I ended up calling my Aunt Betty a, a day or two later, I think it was the next day, just to share that funny, funny, fun, heartwarming story with her. But so funny how, how it ended up with, with her saying, you know, I gave her that, gave her that money and she, I can't take this, I can't take this, looked up and says, I've been praying for provision. And then ended up receiving that from me and going, oh Lord, this is amazing. You've blessed me through a preacher. <laughs> Couldn't hardly get over that. So I wanted to tell my Aunt Betty about it. So I, I gave her a call to, to, to tell her this, this story. And she didn't even have time or feel like listening to my story because, yeah, oh, because she was so sick. Actually, very, very, very sick to the point I mean, I never had a conversation like that. She's one of the most encouraging people that I know. Every time I call her and talk to her, I, I get encouraged by that. She says, I'm doing really bad. I'm doing really bad. It's like, really bad. It's like, but this lady's an overcomer, an incredible overcomer in Christ. And I want her to come and share her side and her version of this testimony from the phone call or from... Everybody, this is Aunt Betty right here. Hi. Mom, would you just stand up for just a second? Stand up and do a turnaround, kind of a... <laughs> It's so funny that, that these two sisters were both bright red hair, especially when they were younger, it's bright red hair, and now it's whatever color the hairdresser, however bright the hairdresser does. But, uh, no. <laughs> but I, I've listened to my mother many times when, uh, because Aunt Betty, uh, she's been to Nashville, she's done albums, she's an incredible musician, does gospel music, and just love her. One of these days, going to have to have her up here on a Sunday morning to do just a couple gospel, western, gospel, southern. Go I think they would like it. Any chance that that might happen? She's on the spot right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got a yes. Uh, I I've heard my mother many times say, uh, somebody walk up to her and say, Betty, Betty, when is your next concert? When are you going to and my mom just kind of smiled and said, well, we're going to have to figure that out. If I, would have been, if I would have been my mother so many times, Aunt Betty would have so much trouble. <laughs> I would have made some really good stories up. I had a great time with that. But I just want you to take this time. I called her on the phone the other day and was just talking to her like, you know, how are you doing? And she said, I would love to share how I'm doing if you like. And I said, absolutely. So share, share, share. And if you have something else that, that you feel on your heart that you want to share with these people, I give you that liberty. Thank you. Well, what an honor to be here this morning. And have we been blessed by the Holy Spirit of God? Have we been bathed in His holy presence? And His peace permeated this whole atmosphere even from the very beginning when we, I walked in, I just felt his peace. Well, my nephew Lynn doesn't call me real often. But when he does, we usually, he usually has a funny story. So a week ago last night, I had gotten a terrible birthday present. I'd gotten the COVID virus. On August 5th, I came down with it. And my symptoms started out very mild. And I went to the doctor and he said, oh, your symptoms are far too mild. You don't have COVID. And uh, you just have a bad summer cold. Okay, that sounds good. And a couple days later, my niece Elaine that had shared my wonderful birthday came down with COVID. And I knew that I had given it to her. 
So I went and had a test, and sure enough, the doctor says, nope, you just have the symptoms of a cold, but I'll t do the test. Well, the test was positive. And I'm 81 years old, and you know, what? they- How old? I know, ain't it awful? <laughs> but you know, the news always says, at that age, you're, you don't want to get COVID. So after I found out I had it, I thought, okay, Lord, I'm yours. I'm not afraid to die, and you and me have a good thing going, and whatever you say, it's good. But my symptoms got worse and worse and worse. And normally when I am sick, I call Lynn and Renee, but for some reason, I just was too sick to think to call. And on the Saturday night, I had a heavy, heavy weight laid on my chest where it was really difficult to breathe. And you know when you go to the dentist and they put that lead apron on your chest when they're going to do an x-ray? I felt like I had about 15 of those on my chest. And it was very difficult to get it, take a breath. 10 o'clock, my fever was 103. And I thought, okay, now I know I can breathe. So I would say, Lord, I breathe in your peace and I blow out the stress from my COVID. And I could, I could feel the, the goodness of my air. And so I thought, okay, I'll do it again. So that is the way I was breathing, was concentrating, breathing in. Lord, I breathe in your peace and I blow out the stress of the COVID. And then I thought, well, it's bedtime. I need to go to bed. And I thought, but if I go to bed, the only reason I'm breathing is because I'm making myself breathe and talking myself through every breath. And if I go to sleep, I won't be doing that and I'm going to die. And I'm, I said, Lord, I'm not afraid to die, but I am afraid to quit breathing. <laughs> And, and I was in this state of breathing in and out with laboring every breath. And my phone rang. And I saw uh, that it was Lynn. I thought, oh, thank God that's Lynn. And he started giggling. And he says, I bet I have a funny story for you. <laughs> I said, well, baby, you'll have to make it quick because I said, I, I'm really bad sick. And he said, well, what's wrong? And I said, I have COVID and I'm struggling really hard to breathe. And just like that, he said, I'll be right there. He wasn't afraid of the COVID because he was coming in the name of the all powerful one. And, and he knew, he knew what he had and what he represented. And he came in my house and brought me some medicine that I needed, but I was too sick to swallow it. And I stood up and he put his hand on my hair and he started to pray. And I thought, that's strange. He's not touching my head. He's just touching my hair. <laughs> but his first words were, Lord, my peace I give unto you. And I had been praying for peace to help me breathe. And he said, Lord, from the tip of Aunt Betty's head through her chest, we speak peace to her chest. And as he spoke, the trauma, the pressure, everything that was prohibiting me from having a deep breath left me just boom it was it was gone and I could breathe freely like a newborn baby that's sleeping and the weight of that of that sickness left at that moment and that night I slept like a baby the next morning I called him at 7 30 and I said Lynn you literally saved my life.
because I could breathe and I, I breathe freely. And from that moment to this, I've had no heaviness in my chest. And in three days, I was COVID symptom free. Amen. And you know, I am so grateful that there is a power that's so much greater than we are and that there are people that represent him and go in his name and aren't afraid to to go and minister as the as the Lord leads. And you know, it was so amazing that I thought, well, why didn't I call in? And then I thought, you know what? God just wanted to do this all on his own. He just wanted to show his power and his might and 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 his wonderful wonderful healing blessing and i'm so thankful to be able to share this testimony today i don't think i've ever called anybody and said can i testify in your church on sunday (laughs) (laughs) but i did ask lynn because i was so excited and i'm so happy to share it so god bless everyone of you for listening love you bless you Ben Richards gotten fairly good at turning my mic on and off when I, either when I'm singing or when I'm sniffling he usually turns my mic off <laughs> yeah, I guess that wouldn't be cool to put down there if I put it in my pants and Renee can deal with it Happy anniversary. <laughs> it was kind of a lopsided thing. I was just telling it to, yeah, your, your timing was perfect to get me straightened up here just a little bit. Walked up here. It's like, all right. 43 years. Amazing. We congratulate you. Uh, um, 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 um. <clears throat> ready. Are you ready? Okay, I'm, I'm me too. Me too. Uh, one of the things <laughs> one of the things that that is so cool in that oh, come on, Lynn. <clears throat> so cool in that situation is uh, get to bless that little lady, you know, the, the little the little saint or the yeah, to get to bless her in that but the next step it is so amazing how when the Holy Spirit begins to lead us and orchestrate our steps it's just like I feel I need to call her because this is such a funny and a cool story to share so I call her and, and, and the, the real reason that I'm calling her, the, re- the real reason I was calling her is to share a funny story but the real reason that he had me call her was the same kind of thing as is why I showed up at that little saint lady's place in the first place was to be able to bless her, then to turn around and be able to bless her. There's the next stop was Aunt Betty's house the next day. Um, it's like, wow. He directs our steps. The righteous, the steps of a righteous man are directed by the Lord. It's like, wow. <clears throat> So I really, I, I love that part, and I, and I love when those kind of things happen. And you can look it back. The, the whole hindsight thing is pretty easy to follow. It's like, oh, Lord, so you here and here and here. It's like, yes, you're awesome. You're amazing. And I'm so glad that I recognize that that's you that, that, that's leading me like this. Thank you, Jesus. Kind of like the little lady. She never thanked me for the $100 bill. She just said, thank you, Lord, for your provision. <laughs> wasn't about my glory it was about his glory and all glory goes to him 
Okay, we're going to turn to Luke. Decision made. I felt this morning, I don't even need to go into that. I better just get started in the Word. That's uh, Amen. <laughs> Was that my wife? Who said that? <laughs> get, get into that. No more detail. Get started. Lynn. Get into the Word. Get into the Word. Get into the Word. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Luke, the eighth chapter of Luke. I think in the eighth chapter of Luke, we will start with, we'll just go up to the very beginning, 26, 26, where the demons cast out of the swine. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee, other side of the lake from Galilee. And when he stepped out on the land, he being Jesus, capital H, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. Got that underlined. Had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus, I say he, had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often seized him. He was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. So this guy was kept under guard, somebody watching over him, bound with chains and shackles. Everybody say bound. Bound. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. So they couldn't hold this guy with a guard, with chains, shackles. He could just break free. The power of the demons could break him free from chains, shackles, and a guard. Probably a good chance that that guard had a sword. Jesus asked him and said, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him. Not just one, many demons had entered him. And they begged him... Jesus, that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. I studied this in, in, in uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and one of them it says they didn't, they didn't want to end up leaving that countryside. They didn't want to leave the country right there. They didn't want to leave the area and be cast out. So he said now there was a herd of many swine. In Mark it says approximately 2,000. That's quite a few, isn't it? 2,000 pigs in one place, that's a bunch of pigs. 2,000 swine was feeding there on the mountain. And they, the demons, begged him, Jesus, that he would permit them to enter them, and he permitted them. It's like, what in the world? Why, why, why did those demons ask to go into the pigs? They didn't want to leave the area they had, and they were a stronghold on the area. Everybody with me? They were, they were a stronghold on the area through the man that we call the demoniac that they were demonizing. They had a stronghold in that area and there was a bunch of them. They hung around the area. They did not want to leave the area. So that's, I, I, I believe, I believe, as I was, it's like, Lord, what, what, what is there... I have to throw one more thing in here. This, this Bible, 1987, Renee's grandpa was using this Bible as his study Bible in 1987. In 2013, I preached a message on this, and I can barely remember what I preached on the previous week. So in 2013, I have no idea what this message was about, but I know what God's showing me right now. But Renee has written 4, 14, 13, preaching this very message. I believe, I believe, they wanted to go into the pigs. When you think of 2,000 pigs on a hillside in an area that wasn't huge, that had to be a significant part of the commerce in that area, right? I mean, I mean it, is, it would be an economic, a major economic structure and I'm thinking, you know, this would be a significant corporation to have 2,000 pigs in one area, just on its own, right? Are you with me? It, this is significant for the area. And I think, wow, that represents, you know, a lot of times Jesus told just stories, uh, uh, 
stories that, that, were, that he wanted to convey. Sometimes he did things that then tell a story in the spirit realm. Some of the thoughts, sometimes he told stories that reflected, you know, what he wanted them to know in the spiritual ear, in the spirit realm. Other times there were actions that he took and did that end up telling us a story about what was happening in the spirit. How's that? Does that make that a little, bring a little clarification to that? So I believe that those pigs were representing the ep- economic structure of that area, and they said, those pigs said, or, or those pigs said, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, when pigs talked. <laughs> Donkeys talk, not pigs. Okay. Those demons said, why don't you just send us to the pigs? Let us enter the pigs, because we want to stay in this area. We want to maintain a stronghold here where we are, and we believe that this is the economic stronghold in this area, and that's what we want to grab a hold of. That's where we want to hang out. It's like, oh, oh. And how many know when you affect the economy of an area, you have everybody's attention? We're seeing that happen in the nation right now. You grab a hold of the economy, you got everyone's attention. This is, this is their money, the stream, their, their money stream. So I believe that's why the pigs asked. Pigs, quit it. Come on. <laughs> Somebody snapped their fingers or something if I do that again. Hey, okay. The demons wanted to go into the pigs. The demons wanted to go into the pigs. Had to do with stronghold in the area and the economy of the area and taking being a part of that, that stronghold, the, the economy, where, okay, I think we got that straight. So they said, we want to go into the pigs. Said, All right, go into the pigs. See, we know when we, when we read the, the word, and it's, it's Paul's writings, and you go into the, it's like, wow, some of the epistles that it said that Jesus, he just made a mockery of the demonic realm. He made, uh, he made fools of them. He, created, he made them a footstool for himself. I just think this is where he ended up creating and, and making a mockery of the demons right there. He said, okay, go into the pigs. Go into the pigs. You think you're going to have a stronghold right here. You're going to grab a hold of the economy of the area. You're going to control something by going into these pigs. Watch this. So they ran into the pig, they went into the pigs, and what did the pigs do? They ran down into the water, they ran into the lake, drowned themselves. Now, would the demons want to go into the pigs so the pigs would run into the water? No, no. They wanted a part of that stronghold which had to do with the economy, which we even see in our world structure today. Demonic strongholds on the financial structures that we have to end up operating under. Are you with me? So, they went into the pigs, Jesus smiling the whole time, like, watch this. Now, you know, when I've thought about this before in the past, like, man, the the pigs couldn't handle the demons and, and they just went crazy and they ran into the water. It's like, no, I don't believe that at all now. I believe I got a new revelation on this that that they had a, a, a purpose, a specific purpose in why they wanted to go in there, and Jesus made a mockery of the whole thing. It's like, okay, into the water you go. I remember, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, it's like, break that stronghold, break that stronghold, and now we're going to establish my kingdom and, and my economy because I've got your attention now. Sometimes, to get our attention, he has to end up wrecking our own economy because we put our faith and trust in our finances, in our job, in our money, and he has to wreck that for us. He has to shake that right up to get our attention. And I know that personally very well. Speak from personal experience in that, it's like, in order to get my attention. I remember, I remember, yeah, I do remember last Sunday, I started talking about money and, and, and Christianity 101, where our purse strings, our wallet, and our heart are connected. As soon as I really started talking about money and about tithe, I watched somebody get up and walk out. It's like, oh, 
this must be getting just a little bit too close to home. I think I pushed a button right there for somebody because they were, they were gone. It's like, oh dear. You know, I think that is so vitally and critically important that we realize and recognize that uh, Scripture says, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. If you have your faith and your trust in the economic structure of any area, right here in this good old United States, you're in the wrong place. Again, I'm going to quote Jack, T- Jack Taylor, who says, anything that you have to check with first before you say yes to God is an idol in your life. Our idol, the idols that we put before God can be many, 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 many. Our job and our finances can definitely be one of them. He wants us to loosen our purse strings, to loosen our grip on our wallet, on our purse strings, so he can use us effectively where our focus and our thoughts are not on our money. Is that... Everybody's still sitting, so I think we're all right this morning. It's going to make anybody really shy about getting up and walking out now. (laughs) Okay, get serious. Okay, the economic stronghold in the area, or the stronghold through economics in the area. I think that's why I went into the pigs, and that was destroyed. They were gone. And the impact that that had on them was significant. Let's go figure out where I stopped. They begged him. So now the herd of swine was feeding there on the mountain. They begged him that he would permit them to enter them, and he permitted them. The demons went out of the man, entered into the swine, and the herd ran ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. When those who... When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled, and they told it in the city and in the country. I mean, they shared that testimony very freely, but they were probably afraid for their jobs because the area had been significantly impacted, and they were the ones responsible for watching those pigs. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus. He was clothed, he was in his right mind, and they were afraid all over again. (laughs) It's like, oh, what did this man Jesus do? This is crazy. So a, a stronghold had left. A man was set free. A man was completely set free, changed into his right mind. He had clothes on now. It's like, oh, we don't recognize you with your clothes. And in his right mind, they were afraid. They also, they also who had seen it, told them by what means he who had been demonized was healed. Who healed him? Jesus. Again? Jesus. Who's our healer? Jesus. Who casts out demons? Ah, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. We do. <laughs> then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the Gadarenes asked him, who? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, him, Jesus. Asked Jesus to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. It's like... Okay, they were more concerned about the value of the pigs, the economic structure that that they saw just disappear, than they were about the power and the value that Jesus could bring into their area and into their lives. They said, we don't want you here. We don't want you here. It seems right now that so much of the leadership that we have in America right now is saying to Jesus, we don't want you here. We don't want you here. And it is up to us to be saying, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We love you. We value you. We understand what you can do. And he can do it through you. Depart, please, please leave. For they were seized with great fear. And he got into the boat and returned. He left. We don't want you here. We don't want you here. You see, there had been a stronghold over that area for such a long time that they didn't recognize the value that Jesus brought. It's like, that's, it's, it's a scary place, and we're finding ourselves in a scary place. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. What was the first step that that, that that man did? After he was freed, after he was set free from demons, he spent time at the feet of Jesus. He spent some time at the feet of the Jesus. He was experiencing, he had an encounter with Jesus where he got set free, and what was the next thing he did? Spent time at the feet of Jesus. Spent time at the feet of Jesus. You know, we, we can go through an experience. We can have an experience where in the, in the congregation, we're, we're going to ask, we're going to give everyone an opportunity here just shortly. I believe, as we were worshiping this morning, you know, <laughs> Scripture talks about God's right hand. Has my right hand been shortened? That powerful right hand of God. As halfway, probably third worship song in my right hand just started shaking. It just started shaking. It's like, oh, God, I know you want to do something this morning. I know you want to do something this morning. I believe that there are going to be some people that get healed in a few minutes, in just a little bit. And not, not just from me. It's, it's the power of God that's in this place. It's the power of God in the prayers of his people. And when like-minded people come together, where there is unity, God commands the blessing. We have the unity. We have like-minded believers here this morning. And the presence of God is here in such a powerful way that I know that are going to be some people healed today. Amen. Are you ready for that? <laughs> some time at the feet of Jesus. Some time at the feet of Jesus. One of the things that we, that we talk about in staff meetings, again, I just share this, is that we maintain an atmosphere at Valley Church here, for you to end up having your encounter with Jesus. That then we end up giving opportunity and leading you in such a manner that you can spend time at the feet of Jesus. So you can have another encounter with Jesus, spending time at his feet, so you can start to hear his voice, so you can see into his face, so he can see into your eyes, you can see into his eyes and know what he desires for you and experience the love that he has. He is a loving, loving father that just wants to lavish his love on you. John 10.10 says that the enemy, our enemy, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He brought COVID. But Jesus came that each one of us, you, 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 and me, could have life and have life abundantly. Abundant life. And he wants us filled with his Holy Spirit so we can walk, maneuver, and operate in his power. That's where there's fullness of joy, but that's where there's healing. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you have received, now it's time for you to give. Freely give. Of your finances, of your time, of the authority that you carry to do the work that he's called you to do, and that's destroy the works of the devil and set people free. Are we all on the same page? Then let's everybody say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Christy, we're ready for some some more worship. Uh, Robin. Robin, Robin, would you come up here? I feel like Robin's going to be a part of this. Uh, He's, uh, man, I just always, I think pastor, 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 pastor. Major? What? Major. 
Major Robin from Salvation Army right here. It's like, it is so cool, like I said last week, when we end up breaking down the walls between churches and between congregations as we come together as like-minded believers. Let's, how I really want to do this, really believe that we're to do this this morning is we're going to have everybody stand. We're going to go back to some worship. I'm going to finish this message We're going to call out some things that Jesus wants to heal this morning. We're going to open up the altar. I'd like to get Pastors Rich, Kathy, Rutzens, and we have a prayer team this morning as well, or at least you two, to to come up here to the front and get ready because I want to start. We're going to lay hands on people. We're going to pray for people. We're going to see some amazing breakthroughs and some healings this morning. What Jesus, huh? Now the man from whom the demons had been, or had departed, begged him, begged Jesus, that he might be with him. Once he spent time at Jesus' feet and getting to know Jesus and getting to experience Jesus and having that encounter, he didn't want to leave Jesus. He didn't want to leave his presence. He just wanted to stay, stay, stay in the in the presence of Jesus. It's like this amazing, this amazing man, this amazing man that was fully God, that could speak to the demons, cast them all out, He just wanted to be with him. He wanted to be with him. Stay in his presence. Stay in his presence. You know, that, that that's sometimes there's nothing we want more, nothing I want more than just to be in his presence. I'd like to just lay around and be in his presence and watch worship and, and worship and worship and, and just be in his presence. But this is what Jesus said him, said to him. He says, return to your own house. I love it that you love me and I love you, son. You've been restored. You've been renewed. You're a new creation right now. Now go back to your own house, to your own city, and tell the great things that God has done for you. So we're called not to, not to just sit at the feet of Jesus, not to just receive his love, but as we receive his love, that then we end up receiving his instruction then we go obedience to what he's calling us to do we love on him we receive his lavish love then we go do what he tells us to do